Thanks for joining us again. We appreciate you coming back today for Animal Room Bingo after we had that switch yesterday. Um, in a moment, um, or right now, how about Emily, do you wanna describe our activity for everybody? Yeah, hi everyone. So I'm in the Animal Room at the Science Center and we are going to take a tour of our live collections and while doing so, play a game of bingo. Does everyone have a bingo card? I see some of you have them printed. If you weren't able to print a bingo card in advance, Peter's going to put a link into the chat and you can go there on whatever device you're watching from and it will give you a bingo card. Can someone read to me something on your bingo card? What types of squares do we have? Should I read one? All right, so on your bingo card, you have some different squares. We have one for a mouse eater, one for an omnivore, so something that eats both animals and fruits or vegetables. We have a ground dweller, something that lives on the ground, a tree dweller, something that lives in a tree. So as I tour the room, we're gonna take a look. I want you to observe the behavior of the animals you're seeing, and also listen to what I'm telling you about them. And that will allow you to play bingo. So what you should do is if you printed out a bingo card, anytime you fill a square, anytime we see a lizard, or a frog or whatever, you should write the name of the animal that you saw in that square. And when you get four in a row, so in a row or a diagonal, you can shout bingo. So you all know how to unmute yourselves, yell bingo out. And we'll just say, how, see how long it gets for us all to get bingo, okay? Any questions about how to fill out your bingo card? And you can feel free to interrupt me at any time. Like if you see an animal that you think might eat crickets, but you're not totally sure, go ahead and chime in and ask me and I will let you know so that you can make the appropriate square choice. And if you want to make sure that Emily and all the animals are really big on your screen, you can always go to her screen again and there's three little dots in the upper right corner. You can click pin video and that way you'll be able to make sure you're seeing all the animals nice and big. Thank you. Awesome, so let's get started. We are starting here with our lionfish. So Trey and Corinne, on those lines, you can write the name of the animal that fills that square. So lionfish, these are ocean dwellers. They're really impressive. They've actually become invasive along the coasts of the southeastern United States, but originally they're from the Indo-Pacific region. We have two lionfish here at the Science Center, and they're actually pretty intelligent fish. They'll track my fingers and things like that because they know that sometimes people coming close to their tank means food. So lionfish might not be on your bingo card, but you might find some other things that describe lionfish. We know that they live in the ocean, so they're saltwater fish. We also know, right, they are water dwellers. They're aquatic. They live in water. And another fun thing about lionfish is that they have venomous spines. So when they um, stab something or something swims into their spine, in it injects venom, so a type of poison that might make that animal sick. On humans, I've heard it just feels like a really, really bad bee sting. People do eat lionfish, and that's actually part of some efforts to curb the spread of this species because it is really invasive. It tends to take over ecosystems where it's introduced. Trey, and right question. Go ahead and unmute yourself. So wondering if we put it in only one box. Like does lionfish only fill one of our boxes on the bingo card? You can fill as many boxes as apply. Good question though, Trey. But there are, there are many multiple animals that fill each box. So yeah, do you think that the lionfish 
is fits some of the descriptions for multiple boxes, you can put the lionfish in a few different boxes. It is up to you. Obviously, you shouldn't put lionfish in the turtle box because we're pretty clear that these are not turtles, right? And there are lots of other boxes that they don't fit, but there are several that apply to lionfish. Right next to our lionfish tank, we have some other fish. These are from lakes. So these are from Lake Malawi. They are cichlids. And these are cichlids are pretty small. They'll get much larger. We had an older, larger collection. Not larger, but the fish themselves, the individuals were bigger. And they aged out, so we've replaced them. One of my favorite animals in our collection lives in this tank. I'm gonna try to find him. This is a fish that was born here at the Science Center and as a very small hatchling got sucked down into our sump. I can see him right in the back there, but it might be tricky to see. We call him Frank because he's an odd mixture of different species of cichlid, different types of cichlid. And he lived in a very dark cave-like environment for a while, but we were able to catch him. There he is, right up top there. That's Frank. We were able to catch him out of the sump. And now he lives in our big freshwater tank here with all the other cichlids. These are some of my favorite fish. You should definitely come visit them when you can, which hopefully will be pretty soon. All right, let's move on to another animal. Keep working on those bingo cards. I'm just covering my camera as usual so you don't get busy while I walk you over to our stream exhibit. Now, if you've ever visited an animal room tour before, you know that we've got lots of different types of life in our screen. I've just startled a painted turtle and right here swimming up to see what's going on is our musk turtle. Musk turtles are related to snappers. This guy's a little bit of a bully, but he's pretty cool to visit with. They have this nice log. There's the painted coming up to see what's going on and sharing the stream with them is our big mama bullfrog. So I said these all yesterday. I threw some crickets into the stream. They also eat lots of other insects. We sometimes give them worms. They can eat a small mammal, like a baby mouse. So sometimes we'll throw pinkies in there and they will enjoy that. So there's our stream exhibit. To get four spaces in a row. So has anybody gotten bingo yet? I don't know, I'll let you all keep filling in while I move over to our rhino rat snake exhibit. It's gonna be hard for me to find the rhino rat because these lovely tree dwelling arboreal snakes are pretty good at camouflage. So we have all of this greenery in here and our rhino rat tied in there. Right now we have our female on the ground which is a little unusual but we're thinking she might be exploring the possibility of laying some eggs down there. So we'll see what happens with that. You can see her in the back. They've got that vibrant green color. She's moving around and they're called rhino rat snakes because of this little addition on the tip of their nose. Scientists aren't exactly sure what that's for, but they hypothesize they think it might help these snakes with camouflage. It makes them look more like a vine when they're hanging out in trees in the Vietnamese rainforest. Nippon, did you have a question or comment? You can unmute yourself. Is there a called rhino rat snakes? 
Yep. That's exactly right. I just that put it in the chat. Correct. I don't think I have that on my... That's okay. You probably have something that might describe the rhino rat snake. Even if it doesn't say rhino rat snake in there, some of these things are descriptions of animals. So do you have just snake on yours? Because if you have snake, you can check that box off and write rhino rat snake. We've visited with our rhino rat snakes now. We learned a little bit more about how they camouflage where they live and hang out in trees, right? And you can see that green coloration would really help if you were in these weeds here. All right, we're gonna keep on going, visit a different exhibit. We're doing a whirlwind tour here, just to get a feel for some of the different types of animals that we've got in the Science Center animal room. So, here we go. A whirlwind what? A whirlwind tour. It's not an animal. She's just saying we're going through all and meeting these we're different animals. Quick. Quick. Yeah, so right now we've reached our bicolor dart frogs. You can see there's actually a fruit fly climbing up this tank because we feed them fruit flies and sometimes the fruit flies escape. Bicolor dart frogs in the wild would be poisonous. But yes. here at the science oh, center. Oh, Pam, so you can they drum. Have, Did you get a bingo? Yes, all of us got a bingo. Everyone at the same time? Yes, um, uh, my friend Una is here, so, and we all got the oh. bingo since we have the same worksheet. Ah. Oh, that makes sense. Good so work. So here we can see, these guys have sort of the opposite of camouflage. So you can see them pretty clearly on the ground where they're hanging out in the leaves. So that's good, a good warning. Those bright colors are a good warning for anything that might want to take a bite of them, that they're poisonous, right? If you're going to be that visible, you better have a different defense. Now, like I was saying, our frogs here at the Science Center are not actually poisonous, so you could eat them if you wanted, but I wouldn't recommend it because they have a different diet than they would have in the wild in the wild they get those toxins they become poisonous by eating insects that have been eating berries that have the toxin in them you can see we've got lots of fruit flies hanging out because again these are fruit fly eaters here at the science center and they haven't quite finished their meal has anyone else gotten bingo we must have some different cards going, Nippon. so that's great. Did you get bingo, Nippon? No, I didn't get bingo, but I just need the tr tree dweller to get bingo. Oh, you're close. Oh, you're really close. I'm so glad to hear you say that, because next we're heading over to visit our crested geckos and our fat-tailed geckos. I like to compare these two species of lizard because they have some interesting differences. So we'll start with our crested geckos that often hang out in trees. They have sticky feet to be able to climb trees and on the glass, there's our gecko foot, crested gecko foot. There's a crested gecko face. And one of my favorite things about this species is that they are omnivores. So they hang out in trees, they'll eat fruit as well as insects. So at the Science Center, we feed them a fruit smoothie a couple times a week. Bingo! Crickets and bingo! <laughs> awesome! Nippon, you Yay. got bingo. Nice. Yes! Congratulations. So there's our geckos, our crested geckos. You can see they're sometimes called eyelash crested geckos because they have little eyelashes. They don't have eyelids. So they actually lick their eyeballs to get all the dirt and dust out of them. Now right next door to our crested geckos are our fat tail geckos. Right now they're hiding out a little bit. So I'm gonna 
Oh, one's coming out to see us. Bingo, bingo, bingo. <laughs> so these geckos don't have the same feet because they are ground dwellers. So they hang out on the ground. They don't need those sticky feet. They eat wow. in a dark spot because they wow. are nocturnal. So they do most of their active oh. hunting at night. These are, these fat tailed geckos are pretty awesome. Is there anyone who hasn't gotten bingo yet? You tell me what square you need, I'll show you an animal that fills it. It's all about the luck of the card. I just you need a ground dweller. A ground dweller, so something that lives on the ground. Well, you're actually looking at one, but I'll find another for you. Right below here, we've got Norbert. Our, oops, I think I might have turned my camera off. Sorry. My bad, everybody. Yes, Dad. Looks All like right. Dexter got bingo, um, too. Congratulations. There is Norbert, our bearded dragon who hangs can actually move pretty quickly on the ground with those feet and nails for a guy that's small. So they're weller. So as you can see, he's your tag here at the time. And we hope the animal we are able to open. There's a wide view of our animal room. I want to remind you all that we are not going to be doing Zoom activities every day next week. We'll be moving to just Tuesday morning. So we're excited to see you online on Tuesday mornings next week. We will finish out this week tomorrow. What activity are we doing tomorrow, Peter? Before we talk about uh, tomorrow, Ani has a question or a comment. Did you get bingo? Oh, great. You can unmute yourself. I don't we know if you're stretching or if you chart. have a question. We all filled up the whole chart. Nice work, Jerome. We all did. Uh, we all did. Uh, can't quite hear everyone when we're talking at once. Ani, can you repeat that one more time? It's about the bearded dragon. That was our bearded dragon. Yeah, that's right. I have one at my school. Oh, nice. That's really cool that you get to see one when you're not at the science center. All right. Yeah, they're pretty so, awesome and popular pets. So what tomorrow, Peter? Tomorrow we're gonna be back in the animal room and Emily will be feeding some of our snakes. So you'll oh, get to watch yeah. them eat. So those will be some of the snakes you met. And I bet we are also gonna feed the snake we're looking at right now, right, Emily? Yeah, here's a little preview of our green tree python. We'll be feeding her tomorrow. Um, just so you know, we do feed mice. The mice are already dead, but be prepared if you tune in tomorrow, you're going to see snakes eating some mice. Um, and then the following day, on Saturday, you have a chance to see us in person in Conley Park out behind the Science Center because we're going to be releasing our brown trout fingerlings. I'm going to run over to the brown trout tank real quick so you can take a look. I know there's a hand up. Ani, can I answer a question while I walk? Good, Ani. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. <laughs> All right, here are our brown trout fingerlings. We raised them from eggs here at the Science Center, so you might have seen them when they were much smaller. They've now gotten big enough that it's time to release them into Cascadilla Creek. And so we are inviting you all to join us on Saturday, right behind the Science Center in Conley Park along the Cascadilla Creek Trail to release our trout and send them on their way Saturday morning from 10 o'clock to noon. And we're gonna do this in a way that's safe for everyone. So we'll be maintaining social distance of at least six feet between groups. And we will require that you wear a mask You'll also want to wear waterproof shoes because we'll be getting into the creek. So we're hoping to do that Saturday, 
but if it's thunderstorming or something, we'll move to the following Saturday. Annie, do you have a question or a comment? Go ahead. Um, my school also has a snake too. Nice. So maybe you'll be familiar with some of the snakes when we do the feeding tomorrow. Its That's name is Ernie. That's a good name for a snake. I like that. Thanks for sharing that. Trey, do you have a question or a comment? I got a bingo. You got a bingo? Nice. Good work. Nippon, do you have a question or a comment? I was going to say that if it's, if it's going to be this weekend, the Saturday thing, I can't come because I'm going to New Jersey for the weekend. That's okay. That sounds really oh. cool. Well, I hope you enjoy your trip. And you guys can stay tuned. We'll have other programs throughout the summer and chances to see each other in person, but from a distance. I might, so I might not even be here tomorrow. Okay. All well, right. If, you, if not, we will see you maybe Tuesday, which is what the day we're going to do this next week. All right. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thank you all so much. Great work on bingo. Y'all did awesome. Bye, everyone. Bye.